so welcome back students to one more session of your structure of atom so as i've mentioned it's completely raining at my place so that's the reason there's a lot of power cut also here so that's uh, that's why i'm just explaining it on the paper so once everything is fine i'll be back onto the board so here today we're going to learn about electromagnetic spectrum so what actually is electromagnetic spectrum so when i have and i have to define electromagnetic spectrum just see so we very well know light is a form of energy isn't it right and that what we did we study we said it is going to possess wave nature and when it has wave nature what what are going to act both the electrical field as well as the magnetic field are going to act perpendicularly on the light yes isn't it yes so now light is a form of energy and in that we said it is uh, you know the how, how is that uh, arranged the electromagnetic wave is arranged in uh, based on their frequencies and wavelengths right we are going to uh, take in terms of frequencies and wavelength so now let us define this so a spectrum is an array of waves okay array means arrangement of waves let me redefine a spectrum is an array of waves or particles they are spread out according to the increasing or decreasing order of their frequency or wavelength so that is your electromagnetic spectrum so how they arrange the waves are arranged according to their increasing or decreasing order of their frequency and wavelength that is how you're going to define so once again let us define so electromagnetic spectrum is the array or the arrangement of waves or particles in the increasing order of their wavelength or or either like increasing or decreasing order the wavelength and frequency so this is the concept now so an increase in frequency should be there or decrease in wavelength should be there why according to this formula v is equal to n lambda if frequency increases wavelength should decrease if wavelength is increasing frequency should decrease that is a concept now so here this electromagnetic uh, spectrum is represented in this in this direction like in this way so here what's happening among all these the longest wave is your radio waves so the longest wavelength is radio waves and the shorter waves are gamma rays so among these the first one as i said again the longest wavelength as you have seen here this is the wavelength isn't it so the longest wavelength the radio waves they travel very far like uh, to the longer distance and the shorter waves are gamma rays so how is the arrangement kept first gamma rays then in the spectrum next x rays uv rays then ultra uh, infrared rays so after uv rays you have infrared in between ultraviolet rays infrared rays so you have a, a spectrum that is called visible spectrum this is where we can see and we have all the seven rainbow colors present in the visible spectrum so first comes gamma rays next x rays then ultraviolet rays then visible spectrum in that we have again vibjo colors what does this stand for it stands for violet this stands for indigo this is blue this is green this is yellow this is orange and this is red yes so after your visible spectrum next follows your infrared spectrum fine so now after infrared spectrum as i said the longest waves those are radio waves which are placed at the end so the, uh, this complete array or this complete array means arrangement so what did i say array array means arrangement so this complete arrangement of waves uh, what did i say either based on the increasing frequency or decreasing wavelength is called electromagnetic spectrum so once you learn the electromagnetic spectrum fine here you are mentioning the wavelengths also right in some you will be mentioning the frequency so now next important thing concept first you should remember the de definition then you should, you should remember about the arrangement of the waves and up spectrum and next important thing is when you are speaking about visible spectrum you should also tell uh, give a, or add a point saying that the visible spectrum ranges from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers this is about your electromagnetic spectrum now let's come back and learn about continuous spectrum what is that after you study electromagnetic spectrum let us write the word continuous spectrum now what actually is this continuous spectrum let us see so here for for understanding the continuous spectrum what should you have basically you should have a white light okay yes fine so in that white light first of all let us draw now i am taking a narrow beam of white light so what actually is this white light white light is a radiant energy isn't it yes it can be uh, like the source of of white light can be sun or it can be any incandescent lamp so what am i going to write first i'm going to take white light this is the first important thing so from where is the white light coming white light the source is at the sun or it can be incandescent lamp incandescent lamp fine now what does it contain it this white light contains 
light waves so these uh, the light waves uh, what would be the range of light waves they are going to range from 4000 angstroms to 8000 angstroms this is the thing yes and each wave has a characteristic color right so now i'm going to take this white light from the source which has a wave uh, range of wavelength of 4000 angstroms to 8000 angstroms now i'm going to take this and just see so i'm taking taking the same white light so what is this this is a narrow beam of white light let us write white light now i'm going to take this white light and allow it to fall on a prism okay this is your prism this is right i'm not so good in drawing diagrams but okay you can understand this i'm milling to fall so when it hits the prism what happens yes now different wavelengths are uh, they start because i said it has a wavelength ranging from 4000 angstrom to 8000 angstrom it's a mixture of all isn't it yes so lambda 1 lambda 2 like that different different wavelength lambda 3 etc so when it hits the prism automatically what happens different wavelengths from here they is they start refracting right this refract refracting or bend to different angles so once the white light hits the prism different wavelengths they start refracting or bent so how does this look now this is going to refract in all the seven colors that is one two three four five six seven okay right all with collage and finally collagen they combine together and give us give us out this beam that is the seven colors two three okay this is three all right um Four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, and okay, seven. And I'm, I'm not so one, two, three, five, six, seven. So all the way your colors. So this is violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Fine. So this is going to give a series of lights. I'm not clear clear with the diagram, but please uh, go through uh, any textbook. Right. So in this violet, the range of violet is four thousand angstroms. Fine. And the range of red is six thousand five hundred angstroms. Now let us define. Now I've got an idea. So what did I say? I took white light. White light is uh, the source is this one. It has different waves of ranging from 4000 angstroms to 8000 angstroms. Now I have taken this white light and allowed it to pass through a prism. When you allow it to pass through a prism, different wavelengths are refracted or bent to different angles. So when this is received on a screen, see or I am taking a photographic uh, plate like this. Here I am going to place a photographic plate. So let us take this uh, screen or call photographic plate. So when I take this, you, you will fee, see a continuous band this continuous band is seen on or a series of color bands are seen on this photographic plate or the screen this series of bands that forms a continuous rainbow of colors is called continuous spectrum so how does this look this is basically uh, a prism in this way and you are sending a source it is this path and finally you are seeing a continuous band of light here on this photographic plate this is defined as continuous spectrum. Now let us write what is continuous spectrum. Where shall we write? We'll write this. We'll put a box here and write this. Fine. So this is concept. This is clear. This is clear. Then clear. And finally photographic plate. So let us conclude this series of bands that forms a continuous rainbow, a continuous rainbow of colors a continuous rainbow of colors is called continuous spectrum okay right so now this is a continuous spectrum of white light so among these right when i said violet color component is shorter wavelength it is almost 4000 angstroms to 4250 angstroms and it when the wavelength is shorter that means higher frequency so let us write that among all the colors wavelength or violet has shorter wavelength and highest frequency because we both are inversely related so when i take the other one among all those okay i've written both here among next one among this red color red color component has longer wavelength longer wavelength because it is 6500 what will be the frequency now shorter frequency so the penetrating capacity is less 
shorter frequency that's fine so now uh, this is your concept of continuous spectrum when this is sent this you get a photograph plate this is the definition and this is the conclusion now after this let us come back and see one more concept that is atomic spectrum so you should be clear i'm gradually going into the concept now we will see what is meant by atomic spectrum so here in atomic spectrum what what should you remember so now uh, basically you're going to your lab fine you're taking your bunsen burner isn't it you keep you take the bunsen burner for uh, like either for heating or for seeing observing the flame test isn't it yes now bunsen burner clear if the flame suppose you're taking sodium salts what is the color of sodium salt let us write that it is yellow in color so on the bunsen burner sodium salts are yellow yes fine strontium salts what are the color of strontium salts strontium is and um, like red potassium is violet in color isn't it yes so now when i take it in the discharge you what will happen the neon uh, glows which color is the neon glowing it is orange red color so let us write that in a discharge tube what is the color of neon it either uh, glows in orange red flame and helium in pink like i have different different colors now if we examine this particular color right when we examine the emitted light with a spectroscope what is spectroscope basically uh, you're heating this right what what am i saying you're heating this so let us draw that bunsen burner i'm taking this bunsen burner you're heating it now let us take this is yellow sodium so sodium has given which color i said it is yellow now you're going to observe this emitted light with a spectroscope so you're going to take a spectroscope and you're going to observe this spectroscope now what is spectroscope Sp spectroscope is a device where you know when a beam of light is passed through this uh, prism and received in a photograph that is spectroscope you are receiving the beam of light then you are sending it to prism and observing it with the photographic plate so now the spectrum obtained on the photographic plate it contains bright lines right so such a spectrum in which you have uh, different different lines represented it's called line spectrum or atomic emission spectrum so once again let me see so what happens what am i going to do i'm going to whenever we are taking such anything under bunsen burner or a discharge tube you get different different flames so now what am i going to do i'm going to take this and allow it to pass through a prism allow it this one and from the prism it is sent or it is received by a photographic plate so this one to the prism from the prism to the photographic plate so when you take it to the photographic plate right so you will be getting a series of lines okay so you'll be getting a series of bright lines photographic plate consists of bright lines how does it look let me draw one diagram you'll understand see uh, suppose uh, uh, basically if i take potassium so now how am i observing i'm going to get on the foot this is your photographic plate now on the photographic plate i'm going to get series of lines like this this one line this one line like this potassium one line suppose if i take sodium how do i get i'm going going to get again a series of bright lines on a photographic plate like a different uh, way in this way in this direction too like this one and two fine so if i take lithium i'm going to get the placement of lines one two three like this you know they are spaced in different different ways you see get series of bright lines right now suppose if i take hydrogen right hydrogen when i see this in the photographic plate i'm going to get see here lows some are closely placed like this one is here one is here one is here and one more here fine so this is ranging from 3500 to 7500 so like this you'll be getting a series of lines right so now what actually how am i going to define just let us see let us define uh, atomic spectrum or a, a atomic emi uh, this in uh, atomic emission spectrum let us write i'm defining atomic em um, emission spectrum atomic emission spectrum okay. let us define this or you can also call it as line spectrum so i'm um, repeating just keep noting it how to write so line spectrum atomic emission spectrum is from where do we get from the white light onto the prism onto from the prism to the photographic plate now define so atomic uh, uh, our emission spectrum is defined as a spectrum okay in which each line represents a specific wavelength 
or radi wavelength of radiation which is emitted by an atom is referred as line spectrum or atomic emission spectrum one second let me define emis uh, atomic line spectrum or atom uh, atomic emission spectrum is defined as a spectrum in which each line represents a specific wavelength each line represents a specific wavelength of radiation from where is it emitted emitted by an atom is referred to as line spectrum or atomic emission spectrum fine so now when white light is like basically when we speak about white light white light is composed of all visible wavelengths isn't it contains the wavelengths all land from starting from 4500 to 7500 so when it is passed through cool vapors of elements you know there are certain wavelengths which may be absorbed so these absorbed wavelengths they found they are found missing in the spectrum so such is called absorption uh, or atomic absorption spectrum so let us write one more now atomic emission spectrum hope you have understood now we will learn a concept called atomic absorption spectrum or we can also call it as simply absorption spectrum absorption spectrum okay yes so what actually is this just now i said so uh, basically when you're uh, uh, taking your white light fine white light as i said same thing i'm repeating for you all to understand now i'm taking white light and this white light contains you know all uh, wavelengths all of all the visible spectrum isn't it yes so when i take this white white light and when i pass these through cool vapors of an element now they are in cool condition as cool vapors fine the certain wavelengths which may be absorbed Right. So these absorbed wavelength, you know, they will not be found. They'll be missing in the transmitted light, isn't it? So when they're missing in the transmitted light, how does the spectrum look like? Like it looks like, you know, it consists of uh, like the spectrum obtained because some are already absorbed. All the lines are not visible. So the spectrum in this way they consist of dark lines, and this da this spectrum is called atomic absorption spectrum or spin simply absorption spectrum. Fine. So the wavelength of this dark line is you know are those exactly like the wavelength of the bright lines both are the same so atomic spectral lines there uh, what did we say it is uh, not only in the visible spectrum it is also seen in ir spectrum or uv spectrum right now let us write what we said and how to write in the exam so let us write the uh, explanation when white light so it contains it, uh, it contains all visible wavelengths it contains waves of all visible wavelengths fine wavelengths what is this done it is, pa is passed through cool vapors of an element of an element certain wavelength certain wavelengths may be absorbed okay yes so now what will happen these absorbed wavelengths these absorbed wavelength are thus are not found in transmitted light not found in transmitted light okay fine so this spectrum the spectrum that uh, obtained in this way they contain what the spectrum contains dark lines spectrum contains dark lines so this is referred to as these dark lines are referred to as atomic absorption spectrum or absorption spectrum fine so this is found not only in what did i say i said it is not only found in the visible region but also you can see it in the ir spectrum and ultraviolet spectrum fine so this is your uh, absorption atomic absorption spectrum as well as atomic emission spectrum so now let us come back and see atomic spectrum of hydrogen <sighs> yes so now uh, i've got the basic thing now what uh, let us start with the concept right so here in atomic spectrum of hydrogen first of all in 1884 right 1884 jj balmer 
J.J. Balmer observed, uh, like what did he observe? He's, he observed four prominent colored lines. So, he has observed, first important thing, four prominent colored lines. So, what, where did he observe? In the visible hydrogen spectrum. So, in the visible hydrogen spectrum. Hope you would have understood. I told you how are these sent. How, how do we get? So, what are they? The first one which he observed is a red line. The red line wavelength of the space lambda is 6563 6, 6, angstroms. 63 angstroms. This was the first line. The second line was a blue green line. So, blue green line, the wavelength of this is 4861 angstroms. Then he observed a blue line. This is blue green, this is a blue line. In that, the wavelength is 4340 angstroms. After that, a violet line. Violet line whose wavelength is 4102 angstroms. Fine. So, this is what he has observed. Let, uh, let us uh, see how was this uh, observed. The same thing in the diagram. First of all, you have taken a hydrogen discharge tube. Okay. This I am just drawing a vague diagram. Please do, uh, don't uh, bother. Yes, this is your discharge tube. Hydrogen discharge tube. Now, you are going to send this. Right. You are going to place a slit in this way. Fine. Right. This light wave is passed through. Oh, now you have a lens. Right. From here, it is passed through a prism, glass prism. So, all these uh, together, right? So, you are getting the first line, fine. Now, you are going to place a photographic plate here. Okay, right. So, this photographic plate. The first line which you observe, what did we write? We have written 6563. 6563 angstroms. Now, the second line which is observed is 4861 861 angstroms. Now, the third line observed is 4340 angstroms. And the fourth line which he observed is 4102 angstroms. These are the four lines. Now, the above series of all the four lines of the visible spectrum, these are called as Balmer series. Okay, the Balmer series. Now, uh, so the, according to this Balmer, he has given an equation uh, which is related to wavelength. So, the Balmer equation. Now, I said this is Balmer series, all the four. Let us write the Balmer equation. So, now Balmer equation is... Balmer equation. What is this Balmer equation? It is equal to 1 by lambda is equal to r into fine. So, here um, uh, let us write that. Basically, it is 1 by n2 square uh, minus 1 by n1 square, isn't it? Right. So, according this formula, now let us apply. It is going to start as lambda is equal to r into 1 by 2 square because it's starting from that second uh, this one isn't it minus 1 by n square now what is r called r is called Rydberg's constant Rydberg's constant and which has a value of r value is 109,677 centimeter inverse now n can be here uh, so okay what, what did we write here okay little bit i think uh, there's a uh, n to square okay, let us not write this uh, as uh, n1 into it will uh, be confusing for you all because i i'll not I'll not just mention this here because uh, i know it will be clear for you all why because just mention n square and n square i'll tell you why here in this case n value here is i'm talking about n value here n can be 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? So, when you substitute the following values, you know, you get the Balmer series uh, uh, spectral lines. Fine. So, how is this basically your, uh, this one, red, blue, green, violet, you know, blue, uh, violet, those are the wavelengths which are given. Now, in addition to this, I am explaining how is the hydrogen spectrum formed. In addition to this, there are four other spectral lines which are discovered in the infrared rays and the ultraviolet rays, right? So, they, they, there are a total of five uh, spectral lines in the series. So, let us see what are they. Fine. So, here I have explained how is, how is this uh, done. So, after his um, uh, 
uh, discovery uh, they were some other lines also discover let's see what are they fine so the first line let us write this as name and let us write the region where they are found region found so the first one lyman series lyman series it is found in ultraviolet rays okay let us see the next one next one is balmer series it is found in visible line which we have seen just now and after that comes your Bastion series next comes your bracket series okay there is no space then i'll write it down this is okay p fund series Bastion series bracket series p fund series all are seen in infrared radiation or infrared region fine right so now let us see the quantum theory of radiation uh, hope uh, this is clear so basically you are uh, you have seen uh, the hydrogen spectrum not completely done i'll show you how to draw the spectral lines after we learn or uh, if, after we come back uh, hope the concept is clear students now let's come back and draw the hydrogen spectral lines right so now i've given you the idea about how when what uh, did balmer uh, discover and then what is lyman so now we'll clearly understand in the exam if they ask you they will ask you explain the hydrogen spectrum uh, given by bohr or bohr's hydrogen spectrum so basically with the basic like the information which he has got so what what actually is that they have different lines we said we took hydrogen and discharged you then we have taken that the emitted light on the to the spectroscope we have seen it in the photographic plate in the photographic plate we have seen different lines then based on the discoverer who was given this they it was named as lyman series balmer paston bracket and p1 fine so basically when energy is supplied to hydrogen gas in the discharge tube what happens to the electron the electron moves from like it moves from the lower ground state to higher energy level yes so ground state is n is equal to 1 it may go to 2 3 4 5 6 7 etc depending upon the quantity of energy absorbed fine so from these higher energy levels the electron again returns and it uh, by jump and like it's going to jump and it return it can return to the lower energy level isn't it yes so in doing so what does it do the electron starts emitting excess energy in the form of photon so from the ground state it is absorbed energy is gone to the excited state from the excited state it's going to drop down uh, by releasing or emitting photons fine so this uh, using this concept let us uh, just draw the important diagram first of all lyman series now first important thing i said lyman series it lies in ultraviolet rays isn't it now let's draw the diagrams first of all in the ground state right so first take this ground state now in hydrogen gas is in the discharge tube this is your ground state right here your n is equal to 1 okay now what is this state called this is called a lyman series so this lyman series lies in ultraviolet rays isn't it yes now let us draw the spectral lines this is not straight this is n is equal to 2 then n is equal to 3 then n is equal to 4 then close 5 n is equal to 5 then 6 and 7 okay n is equal to 6 and n is equal to 7 okay very close by luckily i'm i'm done fine so now in the what will happen lyman series is obtained when the electron is in the ground state first of all i get the first lyman series that when this hydrogen electron is in the ground state okay right that is n is equal to 1 now what happens the uh, here uh, the electron from here okay it uh, absorbs and it jumps to the higher excited state right higher excited state and after some time it's going to drop down to the ground state isn't it during this process it emits a photon isn't it yes so for lyman series n is equal to 1 fine to what extent can it go it can go from n is equal to 1 it can go to n is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 n is equal to 4 n is equal to uh, listen 5 also isn't it so um, once it goes it again has to come back to the ground state so let us write so this part i'm not showing but i'm showing it going down see once it goes up you're showing it coming down so first of all it's starting from here it's reaching here okay if it is reaching here it has to drop down from 2 again from here it's going here and it has to drop down to 1 from here it's going to 4 it has to drop down to 1 from 4 from here it's going to 5 it has to drop down to 1 
isn't it yes so this is lyman series now let's come back to the next one which is going to start at 2 that is balmer series okay which region is this balmer series is in visible region isn't it now it's going to start from n is equal to 2 it will from here it will go to 3 and it will drop down from here it's going to 4 and it has to drop down from here it's going to 5 it has to drop down from here it's going to uh, listen, uh, the sixth level so it has to drop down this is Balmer series next comes your n is equal to 3 that is Paston series Paston series starts from n is equal to 3 so from here it's going to n is equal to 4 and will drop down from here it's going to jump to 5 and it will drop down from here it's going to go to n is equal to 6 it will slow it will drop down this is Paston series which is observed in infrared rays fine so let us extend this lines because we have two more bracket and p form fine so now next important this is over isn't it now comes bracket bracket starts from n is equal to your 4 from here the electron is going to jump and like it will drop down from here so next level it, uh, from here it's going to drop down next level from here it's going to drop down this is called bracket series bracket the last but not the least for bracket series n value is equal to 5 so n value from 5 it will go to 6 it will drop down and the last one it can go to 7 also it will drop down this is your p fund okay p fund series fine so what what actually did i just now tell you i've given you a clear explanation about the spectral lines now let us write in the form of a table okay yes so we have seen the spectral lines of hydrogen isn't it from from it has excited from the ground state to to the um, higher excited state and we have drawn different spectral lines now let us tabulate this and uh, table so what actually did we study just now i said hydrogen board hydrogen spectrum we said we have a series of lines in that the first series of line let us make a table this is very important for your spectral lines even if you forget the diagram at least you can draw this you'll get marks the first subheading would be series this should be a series next would be n1 it's jumping to which level n2 what is the region in which it is a jumping and this is the wavelength that is lambda so let us make the table as i said even if you forget the diagram this will fetch you marks now the first series the ground state series is lyman series in lyman n1 is equal to 1 it will go at you know it will reach it can go from one level it can go to two it can go to three it can go to four it can go to five etc so the region which is observed is ultraviolet region and here the wavelength ranges from 9000 not 9200 it is 920 to 1200 uh, angstroms right this is an angstroms now next one is balmer series Balmer series starts from n is equal to 2. So, next higher level from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3. It can be 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. This is observed in visible spectrum and this will range from 4000 to 4000 to 6000 angstroms. Next comes your Pastion series. Okay, right. Let me draw these lines. Paston series because I need for two more Paston series bracket and P fund lines are not straight don't mind yes so for the Paston series is going to start from three so next higher level four five six and seven this is observed in infrared region and it varies from uh, this is six thousand so this will be nine thousand five hundred to eighteen thousand seven fifty okay right so next comes your bracket series so your bracket series starts from 4 and can go till 5 6 7 x 5 6 7 yes so that's that then next this is observed in infrared region so now this is going to range from 19,450 to 40,500 angstroms last is the p fun series after four would be five it's going to jump till six and seven so this is also observed in infrared region so this ranges from 37,800 angstroms to your 75,000 angstroms fine this is your 
concept so let us uh, uh, see now uh, we'll see the uh, explanation of spectral lines in visible region hydrogen atom hope this concept is clear fine so these are the spectral lines so simple we have taken hydrogen atom we have taken the discharge tube we have sent an electric beam from the ground state it has gone to the excited state with these a series of lines so now i'm going to draw a diagram where it will explain you know spectral lines of hydrogen uh, uh, at uh, spectral lines of hydrogen visible region fine now here in this case so uh, basically here you have your hydrogen atom isn't it this is the nucleus which is there now it has different shells isn't it i'll draw a vague line please don't mind i am not good at diagrams 